Hi, hello guys. This is Sarah from Sarah's Emporium here um, today to do a unboxing first impressions of the Dark Side Skeleton Tarot. Um, this is by Debray Publishing, and the cards are actually from Yuri Skorohud. Skorohud. Um, S K O R O H O D, and apparently this was a part of a Kickstarter. Um, I say apparently because I actually um, had received these um, decks from the publisher because um, they are super awesome, and you know, and I, I'm getting to review these and then keep them. <laughs> Um, so this deck is a result of their successful Kickstarter campaign and the hard work by the talented Yuri. I'm just going to say his first name, or her first name. All characters are depicted as skeletons. This is the standard edition of the deck. Um, okay, so we have a few different ones. So we have the standard deck. And I'm just going to... So I'm kind of using their website right now to kind of get an idea. So, all right, so that's the standard card deck. This one is with the foil, the foil edition. And then this one here is actually the one with the extra stuff. This is the premium. It has the standard deck in here and then there's also a workbook. So we will go through um, I don't have to go through the standard, but I'm going to open everything up and that way we can see everything as a whole. Like I'm not going to open, I almost feel like maybe I should just open this one and this one because that standard deck is already in here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold off on this guy unless I feel that it's not going very well. Um, so with the standard, um, it's a tuck box. And it looks like they have also put the, um, there's a code here. And like in my other videos I've done, there sometimes when there's just a code and not a UPC, that's a counterfeit. But this one is legit, like it is, they're not printing their books um, all of a sudden. So the um, they have their guidebooks online, which is very good. Um, the last deck I did, I uh, popped up that and it, it did work out pretty well. Um, and then this one here with the foil, it's a two-piece box. A lot sturdier construction and then the big pop out here. So let's open it up and take a look, see what's inside. I'm still in frame. Right, I'll take a look at the little one. Well, we're going to open both of them up anyway. And that's the best way to do this one. Did put a <laughs> did open this already, so shouldn't have any reasons. All right, so not much of a glare now, thank goodness. I'm using I'm at home because this is easier for me to do big things like this um, at my work at my office desk than at work. Um, all right, so we got this beautiful box here. And then a workbook, which is hardcover. Oh, uh oh, something happened. Oh, this is foam. That's awesome. So that's foam. Oh, they got a little ruined, but I think that might have just been. I had no, I hadn't been. 
it just could have been the way they would shift and the banding isn't really I think through time after shuffling out for a while oh my goodness look at that look how shiny that is I don't think that this is the traditional one maybe I will have to open up the other one I was trying to avoid that because what am I going to do with three decks? Um, Alright, cool. And this is foam, which is great. Yeah, foam is an issue with some people, but it is not as flimsy and there's no, just no way you're losing a card unless you, of course, you know, it came broken. I do like the box itself. I like the skull and bones, the dark side skeleton tarot. You know, talks about um, to get your messages from Dark Side Skeleton Tarot. This astounding deck has been drawn using stippling and pointillism, a drawing technique in which areas of the light and shadow are created using nothing but dots. Mirroring the tarot story first drawn by Pamela Coleman Smith, the Dark Side Tarot, a uh, skeleton tarot captures the fool's journey as a skeleton and a skeleton world. This deck is perfect for the tarot enthusiast, collector, or professional. And then uh, this big old scan, which I'll do right now with my phone, um, just so that you guys have an idea. So scan. And then click on that link. And then should hopefully see. Oh, and it, that's the other thing that the one thing I didn't like about it was that it like automatically downloads, but you don't have to worry about it going anywhere else. You just have it already. So um, I'm gonna open that. All right, and there we are. Spreading the cards, three card spread. You don't really do a lot. Um, so then you get the image here and then the meanings, which I love. Oops. The meaning upright and reverse. So that, you know, talking about what it is, the symbolism behind it, and then you carry on. I don't want to get too ahead because I'm going to see all the images without me being able to see all this stuff. Okay, so now that that's open, let's see what the foil one looks like. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this isn't the foil one. Oh, okay, cool. So this one comes with the guidebook. Cool. Oh, that's so interesting. All right, so this one comes with the guidebook. And then the foil. Yeah, this one's foil too. What's the difference? Shinier? Yeah, definitely. I don't know if you can see that, the difference. I'm sorry if I'm blinding anyone, but there's like a more of a foil. This is muted. This is glossier for sure, but I kind of like this one. I like that also the black. There's no, this is premium, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the, like I like the black. All right, I'm opening this one up. I don't wanna, but I kind of gotta. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? That's my knife. Okay. Alright, let's see here. 
So this one is the standard one. And it's got the black as well. It does not, oh, okay. Okay, I'm glad I opened it. All right, so the standard one, I have to remember who goes and what. The standard one doesn't have a guidebook, but it has the cards, obviously. I like the black edging, and they seem to be stronger. Oh, intriguing. Okay, so. I'm not going to go through every like card individually, like once we establish the difference between everybody, all the different decks, um, it'll be, these are also thicker, hmm, because these are even thinner, yeah, if you see, um, here, I'll, I'll take a picture and I'll insert it. That way you can see the height difference. Just don't mind my mess. Yeah, and you'll see the height difference. So the standard ones actually are thicker. They have a better, they seem to have a better cardstock, even compared to the foil ones. They're matte. And then the, the standard box one is very flimsy, very, very flimsy. I, I don't know why they chose to do, do that. It's really weird. You know, like these are, I almost feel like that they're made with plastic. Hmm. Take a look on their site again. Premium edition. Yeah, it doesn't really say. Oh wait, do they? Nope. Um. Oh wait, it kind of does. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Pace to read. Okay, so this one here is. Black plastic cards, silver foil print, both sides, 78 cards, standard card size. I don't have my original card, so I can't really determine that. And the set includes a workbook with tarot lessons. Which is pretty cool. Um, Yeah, okay, so that's why that one feels so weird. It's actually plastic, which is awesome. I love um, playing cards and stuff that are plastic, especially when we go camping. Such a big, big deal for me. So that's why it's completely different. <laughs> I'm like, well, I thought it was a standard card. So, all right, well, that was the premium breakdown. Let's take a look at the um, the foil. So besides the fact that it's a two-piece box, it comes with the guidebook. Um, it's front card printed on silver foil, back card, um, card back is black and white. So like that. So it's silver or foil, silver foil. Blinding the crap out of me right now. High gloss lamination. That's why it's super glossy. Booklet with card meaning included. Um, standard card size. So they are the same size lengthwise, which is great. I, I'm glad I opened them up though. 
and then we have the standard one. Which does not have the book, it has cards obviously. It is black and white print, black card edging, which was the other thing I liked about these, but seeing how they're plastic anyway, they were made with plas uh, black plastic. Anti-scratch matte lamination. It's such a huge difference. All right, now my question is, out of the three, I want to make sure I... Out of the three, which ones would you prefer? The light is not helping on our mat or case. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll grab a picture and put it up on the screen. me know which one you would prefer for like um for clarity i appreciate the standard deck i like the foil one for the shininess like it's really cool um it does show the like fingerprints pretty bad um and then obviously i really love the plastic ones because they're going to be waterproof and that's just super cool. Alright, so I'm going to move the workbook plastic ones aside. Um, and then we're going to take a look at these ones up close. And I'm going to put the foil ones on the side as well. Now, that's probably the other problem I have with that. You can see the detailing, but it's kind of hard with the foil. That's pretty good with the uh, plastic, but this one's going to be the one where if you're an artist and you, well, you, if you're a lover of art, then you're going to really want to be able to see what's going on here. So, so yeah. But especially with the stippling. Stippling is literally like you're just doing dots continuously. And the, the depending on where you put the dots and the where they are is going to determine how dark and how shaded or you know how light things will be. So you're you know you're putting a negative where you know the image needs to be one little da -da 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 at a time. So all right, give me one second, and I'm going to readjust, hopefully. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to roll with this. It might be a little bit close for, or maybe too close for comfort, but I think that's okay because of the fact that we want to look at the um, artwork. So let's take a look. We're looking at the Dark Side Skeleton Tarot. This is the skeleton's journey, or yeah, the skeleton's journey through the skeleton world. Like that's how they worded it. Um, so all the characters in this deck are skeletons or skeleton-like creatures. So we have here the fool with the beautiful signature um, symbolisms. He is a he is a fool. He has a white rose. He has a little packet of stuff. He's not paying attention and he's about to fall off the edge, but his little companion is there to help him out. Um, I love the title labeling here. That's really cool. Obviously, I love the skull and crossbone stuff. That's great. 
Um, again, I love the cardstock on these. It's great. Um, I don't know if they... Yeah, actually, I believe the artwork here is also the stippling. Cat's trying to get in <laughs> my room. Yeah, look at that. Even did the artwork on the back. That's great. All right, so I'm not going to keep going with the back, but then we have the magician. He has all of his tools readily available. One hand is up. The other one is, I assume, it's down. Um, yeah, that's really great. I love, I love all of this. Like you can see the, the shading here, and it's all just like little dots. Could see that isn't that crazy hand on artwork just doesn't beat the AI stuff I know that's a big deal right now but it just doesn't beat the um, hand done artwork and we have the high priestess all the markers are there she looks kind of nunnish with the cross and everything, but I do like that you have the dark pillar, the light pillar, the moon in the background. She's holding the knowledge. Um, you know, let's see if I can grab this. Fussing around with the light and everything. I, <laughs> everything's been moved around a bit. Let's see if the. See, this is why I like the book. I can just pop up and, and look right into it. Um, the wise skeletal woman awaits acolytes who will come to her for guidance. She holds a sacred text showing her connection to learn knowledge. Um, learned knowledge. She stands between a black and white column accenting her connection to death and life. Cool. All right, I was just wondering if there was a symbolism from that. What's on the book? Okay, and now we have the the um, Empress. Great stuff. We got the the wheat and the different symbolism there. That's kind of cool. I don't know if that's supposed to be a water, like a stream coming in. Fertile land. Of course, she's a skeleton, so you can't really depict a motherly skeleton because they're all skin and bones but that's nice the emperor squared facing us with the ram skulls he's got his sphere and scepter and the mountains behind him so that's kind of cool so we have like oh um we have a meadow and the water so very nurturing, very abundant, and then we have rigid mountain ways behind him. So it's just saying that he's more of a rigid, there's no black or white, it's, you know, or, um, there's no gray, it's either black or white. I like that. I like that symbolism. And then your Hierophant with the, you know, the all tail markers yeah like yep the keys you know the disciples and then we have the lovers I like that they're like modest <laughs> got a little bit of drapery going on there and then you have the the hair just is hilarious. <laughs> the hair on the skeletons is great. Uh, the flaming tree and then the apple tree with the serpent. 
That's good. A chariot. Very good. They're both kind of looking inward. So it's moving on, but out of pace. Then strength. Oh, too bad the lion wasn't um, also a skeleton. That would be cool. <laughs> but the lion is not. Well, even the horses, they they were. Nope, they weren't either. Huh. All right. And there you have it. She's opening their mouth. Just like the, the other strength. The hermit with his lantern. Looks like he's walking along an uh, abyss. That's cool. I like that. Okay, so... This, besides the dog so far, the only thing I've seen that's been with the skeleton is the humans and the angels. That's it. That's pretty good. Pretty interesting. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune, obviously. Bobs. And then we have Justice. She's standing there with her equality, or sitting there with her equality. Hanged man. Strung up by his foot. Oh, I'm having a hard time picking that up. Sorry. Then we have death. Kind of. I don't know if you guys remember He Man at all, but that he has like the look of a skeletor. Is trying to save her child, and then there's a priest there. That's a little bit different. Then temperance. The devil. Very good. See the chain. He's not necessarily like chain chained up there, but as above, so below. It's good. That's the tower. Scully people. Tower could be more broken up, but I like it. Either way. Then the star, she's very modest. Kind of has that whole temperance vibe to me. You know, she could have been, they could have let her shed her skin. There we go. Now we're back to the dogs having their skeletons. Love that moon. As creepy as that thing is, I know it's a very popular type of moon nowadays. But it um, it just has that ominousness to it. Like, um, yeah, it's just kind of creepy, but proves the point, you know. And then we have <laughs> naked skeleton baby. No, he's got a nappy on. Okay, he's got a um, diaper on. And then a beautiful... Skull Sun. And then Judgment calling out their people. This one looks like is like, give me a give me five more minutes. I don't want to get up yet. Just stop that racket. <laughs> cool. And then the world. Nice. This might actually be one of the decks I, I'm drawn to the most. Um, then we have the Ace of Cups. The Two of Cups. The Three of Cups. 
I like that this more like festival joyousness, like you can see the the harvest. There's a lot of pumpkins, there's a lot of grapes. You know, this is a time of celebration and hanging out with friends. Um, and then you have the Four of Cups. Which is very good. The Five of Cups. Oh no. Look at those cups. They're just kind of chilling. All falling over. That's good. The Six of Cups. That looks like children, skeletons, and very like Hansel Gretel vibe of a like you know storybookish. So that's pretty cool. Different flowers in the cups. I don't think um, I don't think that they actually tell you. Yeah, young skeleton boy gives a cup to a young skeleton girl so they can both feel the joy of sharing. Yeah, so it doesn't really tell you what he was thinking or they were thinking when they did the um, the different flowers. Sometimes that has a meaning, but... And then we have the Seven of Cups, all the different choices. Pretty groovy choices there. Kind of moment you want to have. And the Eight of Cups, moving on. You got that awesome moon again. And that's cool. The Nine of Cups. I like this. Plenty of things, plenty of, you know, cups available. It's not overwhelmed and then the ten of cups <laughs> it's just like <laughs> look at him hi mom hey dad <laughs> that's great Ooh, page of cups oh the fish says bony Great. The Knight of Cups. The water. The whole... I just can't get over how detailed these are. We got the Queen of Cups. Mermaid. Ooh, um, shells. We got the boat on the shore, or on the uh, water. A little bit rapid, but... And then the King of Cups, Octopi, that's really cool. Kind of reminds me of the um, Pirates of the Caribbean where they go to Barbados, I believe, and they were trying to get help. I mean, they have, they were turned into the Octopi and stuff. All right. Um, Drink break real quick. <clears throat> All right, now we are on to the Ace of Pentacles. Like it. And then we have two of Pentacles. Interesting that they did the affinity with bones oh, that looks like bones that's pretty cool now we have the three pentacles collaboration and working the fool's back in action here nice four pentacles that big old grin five pentacles Nice. Six of Pentacles. Seven. Mm 
Yeah, I really, really am digging this. Eight. Nine. All the growth. Very good. Ten of Pentacles. Hmm. A page. The night on the fields. The queen with the rabbits and the fruits and growth and the king pretty much the same idea all right now the ace of swords Two of Swords. That's the uh, High Priestess Moon right there from their depiction. The knowledge is with you. The Three of Swords. I like that they're using the interesting skull pattern heart instead of an actual like heart because they can't. They don't have a heart. <laughs> That's good. I feel like, yeah, it's just me. They're, they're, I feel like they're, they're sticking together real bad. Then the Four of Swords. The rest. Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. Seven. Eight. It's kind of cool. Nine. Yeah. I love that. He's sitting up in bed and he's got their knees up. It's good. Ten of swords. Yikes. Right through the noggin. You can see a little bit of the light at the horizon. So that's nice. You have to get over the emotional hurdle. Good. Alright, page. The Knight of Swords. Pasty. Oh, that horse has bones. It's just bones, that's cool. The other ones weren't. The Queen. Nothing too much else to depict. Then the Knight. Or the king. Alright, now the last suit, the ace of, of wands. Or wands is the suit. Ooh, two of wands. That one's nice. I like that one. Three of wands. Look at that. All those dots are individually done. Great. Four of wands. <laughs> this is like Vlad, Vlad the Impaler kind of celebration. <laughs> That's a spike song. Heads on a spike. Conquer all. All right, five of wands. <laughs> more. Oh, more. 
Six of Wands. That makes sense, though. Be celebrating a victory. Hmm. Seven. Was I like that and I just didn't notice it on the ace? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just didn't notice it, so my bad. I'm like laughing and giggling over it and I'm like, oh yeah. It was supposed to be like that the whole time. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well, at least it's only a flat surface to walk on. A lot to carry, though. And then the page. Oops. The knight. Get the little lizards. And the queen with her sunflower and her cat. And then the king. He also has the salam or the lizard and the lion. All right, very good. There was nothing that I could to do any like separation or anything because it's basically a standard deck just in um, just in skeleton form. You know, artwork done by hand. Um, they shuffle well. These are the the standard ones. They shuffle really well. They're a little bit sticky, but that's okay. Here are the high foil ones. I'll shuffle these for you. Oh, they they do shuffle. They glide really easily because they are um, glossy. I think that's why they couldn't do edging on them um, because they are glossy. Oh, yeah, they really do. They slide very well. And then, no doubt that these are going to be a problem shuffling the plastic ones, which I'm digging. I'm digging pla the plastic. I mean, they're so floppy. <laughs> They have a little bit of a smell, but I, I would assume. Oops, I didn't even go very well. Oops. Yeah, that's great. That's great. These are the plastic ones. Oh, look at that. King of Wands. You know, how many times did I shuffle that and still came up with King of Wands? Alright, so. That's pretty much it um, for the Dark Side Skeleton Tarot. Let me know which deck you would prefer. The ones with the white, the foil ones, or, um, or the plastic ones. Let me know what one you would prefer out of the bunch. I kind of like this the standard ones just because they are clear. They're a little bit more crisp. Like you can see the detailing in it, but it, the other two won't hinder a reading. Like you can still see what's going on. It's just not as detailed as as the black and white one is. So let me know what you think. I, I'm very curious to, to hear what everybody else is thinking. Um, I love the plastic. Again, I've had re I've had like poker cards, regular playing cards that are plastic, and I love them. Um, they shuffle really super uber easy. These they all shuffle really well. They're just they all have their own own thing. And then the workbook. I'm sorry, I'm like really close right now. Um, the workbook is really good too for the standard, no, for the ones with the plastic. That's the premium ones. Yeah, 
So this one I like because they they're this they talk about the author's personal connection with the card. We have a lot of emotional firsts throughout our life, with many upcoming in rapid succession, very early in life and and in adolescence. I associate this card with each time I met someone who triggered a strong emotional reaction in me, for good or ill. I can easily recall the moment I met my wife. Okay, it's a gentleman. I met my... No, I'm. that's not right either. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming and I shouldn't. Um, met my wife at an astrology conference in Athens, Georgia. Um, that very first moment of connection that would one day lead to our marriage. So this is great. So your personal connection with this card, what does the card make you think? They're, so they're giving you an idea in their own words, their own perspective. And then that kind of helps you associate the cards with something as well. I really do like that for, for being able to understand the cards in your own way. I think is important because it, it helps personalize it more for you. And then every time you look at that card, you'll remember what exactly that means to you, which is good. So it's a good workbook. Um, I recommend all of them. You know, there is going to be a preference base and people are going to want one versus the other more. Um, I think the premium deck with the workbook would be very useful for people who um, go camping, um, take their cards with them all the time. Um, I do suggest picking up like a, a pouch or something um, just to store the cards in. And then if you're really wanting to deep dive into the tarot books or the work itself, you can definitely, um, the workbook would be useful as well for studying purposes. Um, I think the standard, the cheaper one is probably the best out of the two. The foil version versus the um, the standard, just because it is a thicker stock of card. I like the edging, um, and I like how crisp it is in the imagery. Um, the foil's got its own purpose. I do like the way it shuffles, um, and I do like that it comes with the guidebook as well. I think that's where you're making out on the deal with that. Um, and the two part box, that's, that's also important too. But yeah, it's, they each have their own uniqueness. Um, and I hope that this helps you figure out which one that you would want to get. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm like, I can't wait to, I almost feel like I want to take out all the majors and, and, play solitaire with these or something because because <laughs> of the, their whole they're just easy to work with but yeah I'm I'm impressed I really love the work um I think the foiling and the plat well the plastic still kind of gives a little bit of the work that was done not so much on the back, like you can't really tell all the stippling in there, but um, but the you know the image itself is pretty good. All right, I, I'm just rambling at this point. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and you got to see inside my brain a little bit as to what I think of and look for in um, tarot decks and stuff. Um, these are three different great examples of, of the same work, um, and each one has their own quality. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you think about these decks, and um, feel free to like this video and subscribe for upcoming reviews and unboxings that I do. Um, also, you can follow me on the different social media platforms. I have a link down in my description. And uh, until next time, I will see you all later. Okay?
Bye.